I'm here with Phil McKay from Kiwis Against Seabed Mining and Duncan Curry, international marine legal expert. So I know the government's opened up vast swathes of the ocean for companies to apply for seabed mining. Yes, yeah, so, so it's clear, it's become very clear over the last few years that the government wants to see uh, a brand new industry in our marine environment called seabed mining and it's large scale. We're talking about scraping the bottom of the ocean and, and you know, scraping the skin off the bottom of the ocean and the, there's a lot of life that exists, you know, the base of the food web exists on and in the seabed. The mined area is left as a dead zone and the dumping of the 90% of the, of the material as, as uh, mine tailings forms a persistent plume down current. We then thought, what are the effects? And frankly, you know, we're starting with a blank canvas. I think no one really knew what the effects were. Now we do know, you know that there's the sediment plume, smothering um, things for tens of kilometres, noise, toxicity. The biggest area is along the west coast of the North Island looking for iron sands. Uh, the black sand along our west coast contains iron, uh, which can be turned into steel. Um, and, and that's we've seen two applications for the same proposal there. Um, and another area is off the coast of uh, Christchurch, east of Christchurch on the Chatham Rise. I know I've seen some of the videos on the Trans-Tasman Resources website of how it would actually work, and it looks like something out of a science fiction movie. Mm. We're talking about multiple boats, uh, a crawler machine on the seabed literally sucking up, is it the top 20 metres? Uh, I, think they, I think they're proposing to go down to 11 metres. Yep. Yeah. The, the, the Trans-Tasman Resources application is for a 67 square kilometre mine area, um, and sucking up 50 million tonnes per year for 35 years of, of seabed sediment. And if you think um, 50 million tonnes per year equates to 8,000 tonnes per hour, so if we say 4,000 cubic metres of, of seabed sediment going up a pipe every hour 24-7, 365 for 35 years. Think a quarter acre section, 40, 4 metres high every hour. What's been, I think, empowering for us in a way is the community engagement, I think. Um, and I think particularly after the first consent was turned down, there was an absolute outpouring of, of um, relief that, wow, the system can actually work. But then they came back again and again. And what you're talking about is that both these companies got uh, Callaghan grants. Yes. Y you, as a community group, weren't able to access any legal aid funding to go through this process. TTR's grant is up to $25 million, you know, and, yep. and we, we were requesting you know, $10,000, $20,000 back in 2013 when we had the first application and the Minister declined uh, to, to enable ELA funding. Mm -hmm. you know, I feel that New Zealand, Aotearoa New Zealand, is an island nation full of coastal people who love the marine environment. And, and um, these proposals are so inherently destructive that it's just offensive to us as, as coastal people. Yeah, well you showed the select committee this morning an incredible photograph of a blue whale feeding mm. in this region and you were saying it was one of the only shots of them actually eating krill. Mm. Uh, it was phenomenal. I mean, when the <coughs> original application went in, this was new knowledge that blue whale was the world's largest whale was actually in this region. We, we, I got an email one day from a NEWA scientist saying, you know, we've just found this. We think there's a blue whale foraging ground in South Taranaki. And I went, wow, really? Yep. They've come to the conclusion that uh, it's a New Zealand resident population that, that stays within New Zealand waters. When you talk about whales, for example, one of the really disappointing things in this application is that trans we were told by the first decision-making committee, basically, you should have done a marine mammal survey. And so that, the, the least you would have expected them when they mm. reapplied would, would be if they'd done one. They still haven't done one. We'd also b b brought evidence about, for example, the, um, the, the Maori dolphins, and uh, even the death of one Maori dolphin would be potentially catastrophic. Yeah. And, but new evidence, for example, we brought this year was on, on penguins, little blue penguins. They, they travelled 150 kilometres in the area, and certainly they would have real difficulty finding their small fish being the prey that they, they need to survive. Um, when there's too much sediment in the water. The science on the effects of deep sea mining is again very new. It's a long way down there, we don't know what's happening. And there is simply no deep sea mining being carried out anywhere in the world. Yeah. The company talked a lot about the supposed benefits of, of phosphate for New Zealand agriculture, even leaving aside the question of runoff. Halfway through the hearing we find actually what they're going to export over 75% of that anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's about big money, it's about finance. Um, international finance and uh, 
the New Zealand taxpayer gets two percent um, royalties uh, at, at the most for the iron sandy yeah. example. Mm -hmm. so, so the economic the economic benefits um, we, we believe just aren't there, and there's absolutely no attempt to value the environmental cost. Likewise, the, the effect of the ongoing very significant noise that, that these activities create. Um, we don't know what effects that's, that's going to have on the blue whales, the Maori dolphins, and on the seabirds. What we said at the hearing, this is not the place to have some sort of um, spatial management discussion. We need to have a spatial management discussion. It needs to take place with all the stakeholders involved, with the, the iwi, with the environmental groups, the recreational fishers, the fishing industry, the New Zealand public and industry all need to get together and say, okay, you know, how do we want to treat our, our entire marine estate? And that's a conversation which hasn't taken place yet. I know you've been thrown through the ringer, like you've literally run on the passion of volunteers and donations <coughs> coming in to battle these big companies, throwing <coughs> millions of dollars at these applications. Mm. Yeah, it's been a, it's been a challenging few years uh, addressing this issue, and you know, the, yeah, there has been a lot of people standing up and, and putting a lot of time and energy, and and that's why we're asking for a timeout. You know, just yeah. just. Hi ho and let's talk about this, let's rethink it. And, you know, Neva's told me how little we know about the state of our oceans around New Zealand. What would be your message, what role would you like to see the government play, both in New Zealand and internationally? In Chatham Rock, where the fishing industry was so incensed because the areas that were carved out that were no-go areas for bottom fishing, that were actually within the mining consent um, envelope where they were wanted to mine, and the fishing industry how can this happen? How can it be that we're not allowed to go in there and bottom trawl it, yet some companies are able to go there with massive machines and, and remove, and, and remove yeah. everything? Yeah. <laughs> and they were just gobsmacked by that and nothing. And, and we also saw in, in the latest um, iron sands application, the fishing industry had spent so much, so many hundreds of thousands of dollars, they actually threw their hands up at one stage and said, hey, we're not going to produce any more evidence because you know, we, we're, 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 of, we're, we're, we're done. Yeah. We're done. Well, Phil, why should ordinary people care about this issue and what's your message to the government? 99% of the submissions, record numbers of submissions to the, to the applications, 99% of them are opposed. And um, so people do care, they become aware of it. And it's um, <coughs> the government needs to listen to the public. Not, not only um, large groups that have existing interest, but individuals who live on the coast and use the environment. You know, an overarching oceans policy uh, should be developed for our, for our you know, really significant marine estate. What's the thing that anyone who's watching this video can do to, to help your cause to protect our beaches <coughs> and coasts from seabed mining? You, know, you can find us on Facebook, we've got a website chasm.org.nz, lots of information on there. Um, we're, we are funded purely by donations and we're, we are likely to have another fight at the end of this through an through appeals process um, and, and other things so any any uh, financial support is, is well used. We, we don't. We, we run on an oily rag. Awesome. Hey, well, thank you both for all the work you're doing to protect our coasts, our moana, the places that we love. Kia ora, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.